Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to a Victoria Caffiano. Forgive me if I mispronounced that last name. Thank you for your continued support. We want to dive into something, okay? We realize that, you know, people have uh, their life to live, right? Yes, every, I mean, everybody does, all right? But narcissistic abusers, yeah, they know this, but they don't want to believe it. Okay, remember, you know, like, because we, we know, right, how they throw temper tantrums when they're not getting attention, and then also when we take our attention away from them and we're, you know, having a conversation with someone else, okay, that, and they get, ugh, <laughs> yeah, they get, they get mad because we're not, you know, we're not giving them any attention. And so, therefore, we're not giving them any supply, emotional supply, energy and motion, right? Okay, so it's because they, they, they really are that self-centered. Okay, these narcissistic abusers are extremely self-centered. Now, some part-time ones, hmm, you know, watch out, all right? This is another part of why we need that discernment. Okay, if we continue to let God renew the mind, okay, remember, <laughs> be not conformed to this world, meaning don't conform to that demonic realm, the low vibrational narcissistic matrix. Uh uh, we're not conformed to that. No, 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 no. And then we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so that's all part of the process where, you know, it's like God's trying to help us get better discernment so that we can decipher things out there in the world as he does what he needs to do as he's going to prepare us and send us back out as sheep in the midst of wolves okay so never forget that's all part of the process okay the healing and the spiritual growth and so god you know he needs to get you where he needs you all right so that he can do that and have you ready for the spiritual battle for the mind okay and so we learn this, okay? And, and that's why we got to have boundaries, okay, y'all? And that's another reason why narcissistic abusers hate boundaries. Because that basically does, it, it's like a shut door in their face when we set a boundary. Because we've got things to take care of, right? You know, we've got a life to live. We've got our Heavenly Father to please, right? We're all about our Father's business, okay? The Heavenly Father, okay? All about His business. And so the enemy wants to try and distract, okay? He'll do that. He'll try to distract us from it. And so we overcome being easily distracted and we learn to ignore things that they do, like the Hoovers and all of that stuff. And then the attention seeking that they're trying to get. They, they're just trying to get, uh, you know, trying to knock us off of, you know, God's path. Right, all those distractions, and and you know we can look at those. Those are fiery darts, okay, as well. And so we thwart those. Remember, never forget, put that armor of God on you all. <laughs> yes, we got to do that, absolutely, and so that we can detect when they're trying to do this, when they're trying to you know get our attention, and and for us to take our attention off of what God has us working on. And so, because the enemy doesn't want to see anybody succeed, uh huh. See, that's a big one. And remember this, you all. Whoever, whoever needs this reminder, that a lot of those narcissistic abusers, you know, yeah, they were they were okay with you, uh huh. As long as you were staying right there with them in the low vibration, uh huh. Right. As long as you were at that same level as them, that that they were okay with you. All right, yeah, they still hated you, but they were, they they could deal with that better. But as soon as you start to level up and God continues to level you up and you start vibing high, uh-huh, yep, yep, then that's when their true colors often show, okay? And a lot of times we find out that even those who claim to be, like, supporting or rooting for us, they still, okay, if they're a narc, they, mm -mm, there's, there's a couple of different ways this can go, all right? And it can either be 
They want to live vicariously through your successes. That's one, okay? And we see this more often than not, all right? They want to try to live vicariously through your success, all right? So they want, because they think they have bragging rights. Hmm, stop and think about this. What? Okay, huh, we're not supposed to be doing that. Mm hmm See how narcs do everything opposite of what God tells us to do and what God tells us not to do. All right, just all that, mm, that let that sink in, <laughs> okay, because they do. And that is also to induce confusion, okay? That's also another tactic they use. And they deliberately will do things like, say, you tell them that you don't like something. Okay, well, they'll turn around and do it anyway. Uh-huh. Or if you say you don't, if you do like something, they'll try to destroy it. Okay? See, that's how the narcs operate. That's how the enemy operate. All right? So that's why we learn to, you know, we do. We learn to speak less, observe more for that very reason. And we don't utter all our mind. Remember what God tells us about that. Okay? We don't utter all our minds because... You know, until we learned, okay, we were full, you know, once too. We still kind of are in some ways. However, you know, God got to do what God got to do. We learn these things. And many times we had to learn them the hard way is that we stop telling them. We stop giving them access to our likes and dislikes for that very reason. And then also we don't give them access to our business. Whatever God got us working on, we go move in silence and we get it done. All right, we get it done and then if we must, yep, like we say often, then we can, you know, we'll make the announcement. And so between between you and God, you'll know, okay? He'll tell you, all right? And, and then it's that, okay? And remember, not everything that we get completed that God has us working on do we have to even announce, okay? There's a lot of things that we do to please God that we don't tell anybody about. I mean, that's just the way it is. It stays between us and God. So that's another reason why we got to have that discernment so we can catch when they're trying to do this. But the narcissistic abusers, they don't believe, okay? They know that you, you we got lives to live, okay? They know, but they don't want to believe it because they really, truly want to hang on to any opportunities they, they they think they have they they want to hang on to any chance they might get some attention from others and so that's what they're doing and we notice this a lot with the aging narcissistic abusers okay because remember as they age supply gets a bit more challenging to obtain and so uh-huh that's right and so what they want to do is, you know, they're, they'll, they kind of mellow out a little bit. Some of them, as they age, they mellow out and they, they like their comfort zone, but they still engage in the childish behaviors and you'll start to pick up on them. And once you do, <laughs> it's like, okay, we got to turn it over to God. We've got to let God take care of that. You know, there's nothing we can do about it. Now, unless, you know, God will tell you because the righteous are bold as a lion, yes. So, putting your foot down, setting boundaries, things like that, you know, no, they won't like it. And I remember somebody was trying to tell us that there's this um, part of life called, like, age reversal. And we realize now that, mm -mm -mm -mm, no, because that's a narcissistic abuser, right? They've always been that way. We just didn't notice it because we were under a cloud of cognitive dissonance ourselves. Okay, so now we're starting to see it. We did, it, it has always been there. We just didn't know it yet. Okay, God hadn't revealed it to us yet. Now he's revealing all. And so never forget that. But the reason why behind all of the shenanigans that these narcs play when you know, we're doing our thing, you know, living our life, and doing the perfect will of God to please the Heavenly Father, and that's it. And they can't stand it because it takes our attention away from them. And so we learn, mm-hmm, yeah, we learn and say, okay. So we can see what they're doing. We don't let them do it. That's really what the bottom line is. And then we realize that we 
okay? Uh, the only thing that we can control is ourselves, okay? Remember, I'm going to bring this back. I forget the name of the philosopher, but it's very true. That the you know, the more people try to control things outside of their control, the less control they have, okay? And remember, controlling other people, mm -mm -mm, can't do that. No, it, it, that's impossible. That, that is impossible, okay? Yes, I know, we say with God all things are possible, but that's not one of them, <laughs> okay? God is not, no, 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 no. <laughs> when we're focused 100% on God, and that's it, we let Him take care. He is the one, that we let Him have the control, okay? God is in full control of everything. And so once, you know, and that's really comforting, too, when you stop and think about it, because it takes a huge burden off of us, doesn't it? Absolutely. Remember, we just, it, we turn it over to God, and, and He'll take care of it. And it, that's just the way it is. What we realize within ourselves is that we have control over ourselves, our emotions, who we give our attention to. Uh, the you know the energy who we give access to what and all of that stuff we are the, you know, remember God gave us free will and so we can make the right decision for us and our circumstances you know whatever they might be but the the narcs when if they're not getting the attention they throw a temper tantrum if their shenanigans don't work, <laughs> no, they do. When they realize that their little tactics don't work anymore, they, they'll throw a temper tantrum. And so they can't understand it. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, I'll share with you all. Because like when I was making the, the plan, stuff like that, for this trip, and it was just for a three days straight of pouting and sulking, you know, because... I'm taking a business trip. Hmm, interesting. Okay, you know, and, and that's the kind of behaviors we see, and it's because they don't want to believe or accept. But see, that's a kind of an indirect way that I wouldn't say that we force them to have to accept it or respect it. It's just the fact that no matter what they do, whatever God had us doing, God had us planning, preparing, and producing. Okay. It's gonna happen anyway. This is what this is a big part of why we say nothing's gonna stop what God is doing. Okay, and that it's that's that's it. Nothing can. Not 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 any narc, not no, nothing. Whatever God whenever God's uh hands are in it, mm-hmm, nothing is gonna stop God because he is in full control. And so, you know, doing that and then you know Another reason why is because the, if the narc doesn't get invaded, mm -hmm. yeah, see, remember, the narc, mm, it's not just about the fact they don't want to believe that people have their own lives to live, it's just that they, they want to be involved, mm -hmm. they, they like to be, again, it's, you know, the center of attention, but they also want to, it's like they have this need, okay? These narcissistic abusers have this, this childlike need to be included in everything. They don't realize that not everything is meant for them to be included in, all right? They don't understand that. They still have that childlike, that childlike thinking where just because they know so-and-so or just because they're related to so-and-so that they have uh, privilege or something, okay, that they're, they're privy to be included in and invited to uh, all that that person is, is working on and doing, and, and that's just simply not the case, right, but they don't, under, they don't understand it, they don't want to, okay, they, they don't want to be left out, they have that fear of being locked out, left out, abandoned, so they project that outward, okay, and, and, and deliberately, I have one do that, Okay, tried to try to pull that the old shenanigan that we uh, we're all, all too familiar with, right? Where they try to deliberately see if they can make us feel left out because they themselves feel left out, and so now they're throwing a temper tantrum about it. When the the bottom line is, chosen one, we don't care. <laughs> see, they don't understand that either. And, and why that, that, that kind of behavior of purposely trying to make us feel left out, all right? Because it's our, you know, hey, listen, we're, we're just living our life, 
okay, doing what God got us doing, all right? But they they don't, and and you know, it's another thing is because they themselves don't have a life. Stop and think about that. They don't want to believe that everybody else does actually have a life of their own. They don't really have one. They live in their comfort zone. How living in your comfort zone? You know, that's that's not living. Okay, that that's just, that's not living. Okay, we have got to step outside of our comfort zone when we get in our purpose. It's just inevitable, okay? <laughs> we are going to have to. And it's it's a wonderful thing, though, too, because we learn so many new great things. Yes, outside of the comfort zone. Oh, gosh, yeah. Wonderful things. And we meet other people who are going to be sent across our path, yes, from God, to help us get where he needs us to be. So there you go. That's how that works. But see, they don't, because they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Remember something, you all. They don't want to. They they want to pull as many people with them. Okay, to live in their comfort zone with them to keep them feeling comfortable because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And never forget the Holy Spirit. Okay, is more than just our comforter. Okay, he is also our guide. You know, he. Oh my goodness, so many things. You know, he tells us when when to speak, when not to speak, what to speak, and things like that. So you know, he, the Holy Spirit, is much more than just our comforter. But that's why we don't we don't live in our comfort zone because we don't. No, no we're we're good. We're good. We like learning new things, and in order to do that, we have to unlearn, you know, old behavior, uh, behaviors, and um, old teachings from the world that we realize that's not from God. <laughs> okay, when we realize what's not from God, all right, everyone. But that, but there's a big why. Okay, if you've got any narcs around you that continue to try and distract you and, and trying to get on your nerves and trying to uh, like be, be forceful with you know, making you think that you have to invite them and include them in, in all areas of your life, you simply do not have to. Uh, 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 no. And so if you've got any around you that are doing that, that's why. Because they don't want to believe that you have your own life to live. All right, that's a big one right there. So as always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. You can check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.